immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God. Immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God, King of kings and Lord of lords, the great promoter himself, we worship you. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. My Lord and my Savior, we have gathered again together in your presence. Lord God Almighty, please reach out to us. You have been lifting us up higher and higher for all these past weeks. Father, take us even higher yet today. Amen. Meet all our needs, Lord, Amen. and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, why don't you wave to one or two people and say, good morning, God bless you. And then you may please be seated. We are continuing with our series, Going Higher, and now we move on to part 17. And today, our text again is going to be First Kings chapter 17, reading from verse 17 to 24. 1 Kings 17, from verse 17 to 24. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times. And cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. The Lord will hear your voice today. Amen. And the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Now I'm sure you say, I bet we've read this passage, we've dealt with this particular aspect of the story before. Yeah, I know. But uh, there is still a lot to learn. That's why we want to look at this. So if, if you want to give it a subtitle, you can say, The Child Died, Part 2. You see, whenever you are going higher, sooner or later, you will pass through fire. 
everybody will pass through fire, that's for sure. I mean, Isaiah 43 verse 2, Isaiah 43 verse 2 tells us that when you pass through the fire, it didn't say if, it's a matter of when, which is very comforting. It means that if you have already passed through fire, congratulations. If you are passing through fire, hey, congratulations, because you will come out. If you haven't passed through fire, well, get ready. It's a matter of time. The beauty of it is that when you pass through the fire, according to the promise of God, it will not burn you. What if I'm already a Christian? Will I still pass through fire? Jesus Christ himself said, in this world, you will have tribulations, not may, will. But, thank God for but, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Because Jesus overcame, you too will overcome. Anyone climbing, going higher, must pass through fire, must weather a storm. So this, this particular passage should be an encouragement to those of you who are passing through a storm right now. Don't worry. You will survive. As a matter of fact, what I want to share with you very briefly this Sunday is when the storm is over, the one who has been in the storm usually asks certain questions. Questions like, is it over yet? Question like, is it truly over? <laughs> Questions like, how did I survive that? Because you are going to survive. Yeah. How did I survive? Is the storm over? I mean, you can imagine the children of Israel that have been terrorized by Goliath for 40 days in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Every day they woke up, they hear the roar of Goliath. Any one of you strong enough, come and fight me. And they will all run and hide. Then a day came. As suddenly as the storm arose, the storm was over. I'm sure when the soldiers woke up on the 41st day, and they didn't hear the roar of Goliath, many of them didn't know whether they were awake or they were still sleeping. You mean Goliath is gone? Whether the devil likes it or not, all the noise of the terrorists in Nigeria will cease very soon. Yeah. Every day now, when you turn on your television, you open the newspapers, it's so many people have been kidnapped, so many people have been killed, so many. That is going to end. Yeah. Whether the devil likes it or not. Because you see, when the man of God suddenly heard the widow woman say, Man of God, when you were hungry, I took you in. I was feeding you every day. 
the king was looking for you. And as you read the story further, when you get to 1 Kings chapter 18, the king sent everywhere to look for Elijah. And if they go to any place and they say he's not here, he will ask them to swear. When the king was looking for you, I hid you. Now, look at what you have done in, re in return. If you find yourself in the position of Elijah on that day, that will be fire. Because the food you have eaten, you can't vomit. And that woman was speaking the truth. I mean, you will feel as if the ground should open its mouth and swallow you. Elijah was in fire. Oh, many people thought it was the widow who had a real problem. Yeah, she had a problem, but Elijah had a big one. God, you are the one who sent me here. I obeyed you. Look at what's happening. If you listen to his prayer, how can you do this to the widow <laughs> that I'm staying with? But then he took that boy upstairs, cried to God, laid on the boy three times, and the boy came back to life. Do you know that was the first time that uh, somebody who died came back to life through the hand of a man? I have good news for those of you who are passing through a storm. Those of you who are passing through fire. Very soon, very, very soon, you will testify. Amen. But after the boy came back to life, I'm sure for quite a while, Elijah must be asking himself, am I dreaming? Did this thing really happen? I mean, you know, in Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, Acts 12 from verse 5 to 11, when the angel came and the doors opened on their own accord, and the angel came into the, into the prison where Peter was, and Peter was going to be killed the following morning, Peter had just surrendered. Mm. <laughs> My brother James was gone, so let me get ready. And all of a sudden, the angel woke him up. The chains dropped off. He walked through the prison. The doors were open on their own accord. The Bible said, when he got out, he said, am I dreaming? I decree in the name that's above every other name, that kind of miracle, that for days you think you are dreaming. May God give it to you today. Amen. When this miracle happened of the raising of the son of the widow of Zarephath, I am sure Elisha for some time will be saying, did the child really die? Did I raise the dead? I mean, who am I? I mean, Elijah the Tishbite of the, of the habitats of Gilead. I come from a family so low, they didn't mention the name of my father. I've not read of anyone raising the dead. Did I actually raise the dead? There are many occasions when something will happen in your life. You get a miracle and you begin to wonder. Did it actually happen? I mean, when you look at Exodus chapter 14, you can read it from verse 1 to 31. Exodus 14 from verse 1 to 31. The Bible tells us that the children of Israel go to the Red Sea, and then the Almighty God performed a miracle. The Red Sea opened, and they all got back to the other side. And when they look back, they saw all the army of Pharaoh gone, and the sea was back in its position. They definitely must have been asking, 
do you mean we pass through that sea? Are you saying that forever now we are free from Pharaoh? I'm sure when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fairy furnace, in Daniel chapter 3, you know the story. When they came out and they looked at the furnace, the furnace was still there, burning as hot as ever. They must be saying, you mean we came out of that? How did it happen? Even in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 to the end, Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 to the end, I'm sure occasionally Daniel will be saying, you may have spent a night in the den of lions, and I'm here. Is it that lions were not there? But I saw, I saw those who threw me to the den being swallowed by the lions. I have good news for all of you who are passing through difficult times. One day very soon, you will look back and say, God, I can't understand how I passed through that. But you will pass through. Amen. You're going to come out alive. Amen. You're going to come out of fire on bond. You're going to come out of rivers without being drowned. Amen. But you see, the beauty of it all, and this is the real beauty, when you are going higher and you pass through fire, it is to purify you. God said, every son of Levi must be purified. He said, I will sit down as a refiner will refine silver and gold and pass all my servants through the fire for purification. You are not likely to reach your goal without passing through fire. Oh, you have grown. You have moved high. Praise God. But there are higher heights ahead. And there must be a taste of fire before we reach that great height. You know the story of Isaiah very well. Isaiah was a great prophet. He was the one who said in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, Isaiah 1, 19, if you are willing and you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It came from the mouth of Isaiah. He's the one who says, Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. It came from the mouth of Isaiah. But it is only in Isaiah chapter 6 when he had seen God in all his splendor. When God wanted to move him to a, a greater height that he looked at himself and saw how dirty he was. And he cried to God. And God broke him to pieces and sent fire from heaven to touch his lips. <laughs> the fire touched his lips. If we are to believe uh, scientists, your lips are the most sensitive part of your body. As it were, that's what you use to taste food. It's, it's what you use to kiss, to pass on a message of love. But Isaiah kissed fire. Before God said, all right now, you can now begin 
your real journey to greatness. I have good news for those of you who are passing through fire now. You will soon come out. And the beauty of it is this, that when you pass gold through fire, it comes out better. Mm. It was Job who said, when he has tried me, I will come forth as gold. You know, some people have cheapened Christianity. They have treated Christianity as if it is just bread and butter. Nobody wants to make you an officer in an army without having been rigorously trained. In the olden days, when they find that you are a good soldier, they will send you to Sandhurst in Britain. And if they, those who have been there, when they return, they will tell you they have gone through fire. It's only then <laughs> that will qualify to be an officer. The Almighty God, who has brought you thus far, is not going to abandon you in the fire. As a matter of fact, for many people who have gone through fire, when they come out on the other side, they always sing. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 30, verse 5, Psalm 30, verse 5, that weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Your joy is coming. Amen. In Exodus chapter 15, you can, if you like, read it all the way from verse 1 to 12. When the children of Israel crossed over to the other side, they sang to praise God. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, and you can read it from verse 1 all the way to 12. 1 Samuel 2. From verse 1 to 12. After Hannah had been through the fire that the second lady in the house had passed her through, she composed a song. All of you who are passing through fire, my message for you today is simple. Very soon, you will compose a song of praise. Yeah. And the whole world will hear it and sing with you. Yeah. The only fellow who can pass through fire and be consumed is the one who goes into the fire alone. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fire. Those who threw them in were consumed by the fire. When they got into the fire, the Son of God was there waiting for them. And he turned the furnace to an air-conditioned room. If God is with you, you will come out of the fire better than you went in. Because when Shedra, Mishan, and Abednego came out of the fire, they were promoted. They were moved higher. But those who didn't have the Lord with them, just come in near the fire alone, destroy them. That's why I want to appeal to those of you who are not sure of your salvation. Please, because fire is coming. For you to be able to survive, you need the Lord. So for your own sake, for your own future, surrender your life to Jesus Christ now. Oh, you said, no, 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 I'm comfortable. I, I'm secure. 
I have insurance for everything. There's no way fire can come my way. Hey, what about the fire of hell? Sooner or later, you will die with all your wealth, with all your position. When the day of death comes, it's only if you have Christ that you'll be able to say like David said, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. If it's not with you, hmm. fire is coming. So I appeal to you, if you are listening to me now and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, please do so now. I will give you two minutes. If you are in a church setting, run to the altar and fall on your face before the Almighty God and ask him to save your soul so that when the fire comes, it will not burn you. Shall we pray? You talk to the Almighty God, ask him to have mercy on you, ask him to save your soul, ask him to wash you clean with his blood. And those of you who are backsliders, return to him now before fire comes and say, Lord, I can't live without you. I'm coming back now. Receive me. And those of us who are already children of God, please intercede for these people. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. And cry to God for yourself too. If you are passing through fire, pray that very soon God will bring you out on the other side. No matter how hot the fire, it has the ability to steal every storm. And it will do the same for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father and my God, I want to bless your name once again for your word. I want to thank you for the assurance that definitely our tomorrow is going to be all right. Amen. I want to thank you for all those who have come to surrender their life to you. Please receive them. Amen. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Please bring them into the family of God. Amen. So that when they have to pass through their own fire, the fire will not burn them. Amen. And Lord God Almighty, I'm committing every one of us into your hands. <laughs> Those of us who have passed through fire, the grace to praise you for survivor, give to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are passing through fire now, my Father and my God, Bring them out safe and sound on the other side. Amen. And Lord God Almighty, I am praying that those who are yet to pass through their fire, now that they have you by their side, give them the, the courage, the peace of mind, so that they will go through without fearing at all in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God Almighty, when we come out of the fire, even as it's clear in your word, promote us, Lord, Amen. and take us higher still. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I rejoice with those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ. Please contact me as soon as possible so that I can begin to pray for you. I can assure you, if I get your names, your address, and your prayer requests, I will be praying for you. Because the almighty God that I serve is more than able to solve all your problems and to take you through fire without being burnt. Now, those of us who are already children of God, I'm sure you will continue now to go through life with confidence that even if you have to pass through fire, that fire is going to lead to promotion. Amen. And you will come out pure as gold. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord.
It is a wonderful Sunday service that we have had today. And we give all the praise and all the glory to the Almighty God. What 